Hello my motor enthusiasts. You're tuned into F1 Motor Fever podcast. Today, we have some shocking news from the Qatar Grand Prix. Oh? What's cooking, Enzo? Well, the Mercedes team had a disastrous start to the race. Lewis Hamilton and George Russell collided on the first lap. Blimey, that's right out of a Hollywood script. What exactly happened? Hamilton, on soft tires, tried a daring move around the outside of Turn 1, challenging Russell and Max Verstappen, who were on medium tires. But Hamilton and Russell ended up making contact. You're joking! And the repercussions? This sent Hamilton into the gravel and Russell had to pit for a new front wing. No penalties were handed out though. That's quite the kerfuffle. What was the team's response? Bradley Lord, the communications director, described it as, about as badly as a first lap can go. However, he emphasized that both drivers have been understanding about the incident. So, a major setback for Mercedes, then? Indeed. But they remain focused on their battle for second place in the Constructors' Championship. There's a lot more to this story, so stay tuned, folks. Hey everyone. You already know me, this is Enzo. And I'm your co-host, William. At your service. We're here, same time every day, bringing you the hottest news in Formula 1 on F1 Motor Fever podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell, it really helps us keep the show on the road. Now, let's go full throttle. You know, this incident brought back memories, a bit like a deja vu. I was covering the Spanish Grand Prix in 2016 when Hamilton and Nico Rosberg collided. Oh really? Did you also predict that one? Well, I did express some concerns about the aggressive strategies that both drivers had been displaying. No collisions happen without a reason, after all. Course, course, our very own Nostradamus, aren't we? Now, that's a bit harsh. I'm just saying, there were signs. It's part of my job to perceive these patterns. Ah, I'm only having a laugh. No harm meant. Bradley Lord certainly had his hands full explaining the incident, especially with Toto Wolff recovering from his knee surgery. Indeed, it's a tough situation. Still, the team has experience with collisions like this one. Remember the 2016 Spanish Grand Prix, right? Absolutely, and we all saw how that crash opened the doors for the young Verstappen to take his maiden victory with Red Bull. What a race that was. True, true. And Lord mentioned this shared document, the racing intent, which they've all agreed upon. It's fascinating to see how serious they are about avoiding these clashes. Absolutely, and it's clear they're really focusing on maximizing the team's point scoring, especially with the fight for second in the constructors' standing still raging on. With only 28 points separating Mercedes from Ferrari, the final races of the season will be nail-biting, to say the least. Indeed, the pressure is definitely on. Let's see how it all unfolds. William, fancy taking a gander at some recent digital chatter? What are the fans saying online? Absolutely, let's have a look here. So, we've got a post from Candler saying, quote, F1 has released the official schedule for the Las Vegas Grand Prix, unquote. Oh, the Las Vegas Grand Prix, that sounds exciting. What are the fans saying? Well, we've got an interesting comment right out the gate from Bunderacer, quote, brave decision to put qualifying at prime strip club hours let's see how it works out for them, unquote. I suppose they'll be hoping the drivers stay focused on the track. Indeed, and there's a chain of comments going on. Icehand Gino mentions, quote, nope, other night races never go after 10 local unless there's a red flag. My guess is that they want all sessions, practice included, at night time for visuals, unquote. Ah, the glitz and glam of Vegas, definitely a spectacle worth waiting for. There's more, Lowell adds, quote, Europe prevents it from running earlier. Europe is still F1's main market, there's a reason every European race and even some outside Europe are at 3pm Central European summer time. 7mish is the earliest they can get away with, unquote. So, it's all about balancing the global audience. The sport is indeed expanding. Fascinating insights though, keep them coming. Well folks, that brings us to the end of another engrossing episode of F1 Motor Fever podcast. We dug deep into the latest race, analyzing the thrilling moments, the strategies, and how it all unfolded. We really appreciate you joining us and if you've enjoyed our chat, don't forget to subscribe and click on that notification bell. You wouldn't want to miss out on our upcoming episodes. Share us with your fellow Formula 1 enthusiasts on all social platforms and let's keep the conversation going. 
And remember, we're always ready to light up your screens with our lively banter every single day. So, never miss an opportunity to tune in. We've got some real corkers lined up for you in the coming weeks. We're ever so grateful for your support, and we're raring to bring you more in-depth discussions on everything Formula One. Until the next episode, then. So, remember folks, keep your seatbelts fastened and your engines revved up. We'll be back before you know it. Together, pedal to the metal, keep your gaze on the road, our channel's content is pure gold.